Celery. Paul Henry. Um, right, it's 19 past eight. Uh, our commentators this morning, Martin Snedden, Duco Events CEO. Martin, good morning. Morning, Paul. And Jeremy Corbett, Seven Days host, Seven Days back again tonight. It is, and there's a weird tension in studio here. Yeah, oh, you've picked it up as mm, well. God, yeah. it must be weird for you to pick it up. Um, it seven Days returns in we do. naught days. Yep, naught days, 9.30 <laughs> tonight, TV3. All right, brilliant. Uh, and there the ad ends. Um, mortgages, do you, you wouldn't even have a mortgage, would you, Jeremy? I yes, mean, there do. must be a lot of money in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I do have a mortgage, and uh, yeah, the, the lowering of the OCR very little impact to me. I mean, we're at, we're at the we're at the whim of such bigger players, you know, the foreign exchange traders and the rest of it. There, you know, it's like if you're an Olympic size swimming pool, how much can you warm it up by weighing in it? Yeah, you know. Yeah, this is this is my opinion. Yeah. So you won't go into your bank. And discuss lowering your particular interest rate today. No, you, are well, you you're not allowed to fix floating or fixed? Bit of both. Yeah, but you're not allowed to go into banks these days. Mm. That you don't actually physically go into a bank. You should. There's an internet thing, mm. so you don't. Uh, you don't can't negotiate to, on the internet, really. Well, you can get you? charged if you go into a bank because yeah. then you're talking to a human, and that's that costs money. So you're not prepared to risk being charged. I'm not prepared <laughs> to risk being charged for the small change in my mortgage. I don't know why. It could just be a vibe, and it could just be me, Martin. But I think out of the two of you, I would take financial advice for you over Jeremy? Yes, that's probably sensible. Because you um, seem to me to have more of a financial head on your shoulders. One would have thought so, but I'm the one with a whopping great mortgage, and that's really? the stupidity of living in Wellington and Christchurch for too long and trying then to come back oh, in Auckland and, and buy a house. And, oh. So I'm very happy if the interest rates go down. You floating or fixed? Uh, fixed for a year, but... Uh, you know, I want Auckland housing prices to go up, so that's building the equity. You know, that's the thing that we just... Hardly anyone ever says that. But, you know, for everyone that complains about how hard it is to get into the Auckland market, once you're in it, you don't... The last thing you want is for your, your asset to be eroded. And that's it. And that's that's the fear, is when you can't get into it. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I've got four kids. I've, two of them are in houses now, but two of them aren't, and uh, they're not earning any income. But you can help them out because you're making a fortune at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, but that's because Joseph Parker's fight in Palmerston, all sponsored by Burger King's, a sellout tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just had a few other ideas. Two dollar whoppers. Yeah. Yeah. Two dollar whoppers. Don't forget those. Martin and I've been talking um, about a new uh, new event for Duco, which oh, yeah. is uh, arm wrestling cicadas. Real oh, big. real yeah, big. Yeah. Once yeah. every seventeen years, we'll mm-hmm. hold it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, mm-hmm. that's great. Are you taking the Mickey out of me by any chance? Um, right. Let's talk about Nick Smith. Talking, taking the Mickey, Nick Smith. Um, so everyone knows this yarn. He, every, in fact, everyone saw that he had piled um, journalists onto a bus to show them these great housing mm-hmm. areas. So of all the housing areas, he chose to choose one that he didn't even have access to. So he walked. He walked journalists over this land that actually the government doesn't own and suggested they were going to build houses on it, Martin. It's a good segment for seven days, I would have thought. (laughs) Um, At least mow it before you show people (laughs) the, the land. You know, that would be my first thing. And also, he doesn't strike me to have the complexion that he should be outside at all, Nick Smith. It's, no, which is odd, given that he was, um, he was uh, you know, environment minister, wasn't he? I think it's just a real reflection of the disconnect that's happening in Auckland as they try and grapple with trying to make more space for housing. I mean, you know, Auckland City want to go up, National want to go out. No one's getting it right. How do they? But I mean, how do you get something like that so wrong? I mean, how much money we threw into the the executives and the administrators and the people in the department that chose these sections of land, and then they fine tune them to a tiny little group that you'll actually take the media to, and it turns out that those bits of land they don't even own. Yeah, they should have used GPS and gone. You're to in the, charge of events. Yeah, I mean, how yeah. does that even happen? And then, of course, then of course, Nick Smith won't even front it, and he just sort of stands the prime minister in front of the media to explain why this <laughs> happened. As we know, the prime minister can explain anything, mm. but um, yeah, real embarrassment. Real embarrassment. All right, we will be back with our panel, Jeremy Corbett and Martin Snedden, in just a moment. This is my fight. Welcome back. Great to have you with us Friday morning. This is Paul Henry throughout the nation on Radio Live and TV3 and throughout the world on the interweb, thanks to our partner AMP. Uh, our panellists this morning, Martin Snedden, Duco Events CEO, and Jeremy Corbett from Seven Days. Um, the Labour think tank. Um, Martin, is this a good idea to very publicly say, you know, we're actually gazing at our navels and we've invited this person who's a vague friend of Labour um, in to tell us what we should be doing right? I need to fix it. You know, they're in deep, What do they need deep, to fix? Well, we need an effective opposition. You know, 
politics really, for, for good governance to happen, good government, you really need an effective opposition, and we haven't had one for a while. So I'm hoping, like hell, they find the solution to... Bouncing because what do you think the problem is? I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? We were talking about this this morning, and there's, there is no policy on the horizon. And I know there's still a couple of years to go, but how do you effectively oppose if you don't have an idea of what to do yourself? Yeah, and that's been their problem all along, is that, you know, uh, Key's very good at stealing the, the, the ground that exists, and they just don't react, they don't think and, and create great stuff that makes people sit yeah. up and take notice. And if you were on the think tank, Jeremy, what mm. would you be telling them now? We'll get the middle ground. That's yeah, yeah Nationals winning there, and uh, much like Nick Smith and his plot of land, they don't own it. So go in there and steal some of it back. Nice, Yeah, nice. pretty straightforward. Any, any strategies for doing that? You... Um, rename yourself the opposition. Yep. I think that would be good. And then uh, then you sort of, any party that's referred to suddenly becomes you. Maybe a change of colour. Yeah. I think red's been, you know, move on from that. Also oh, go for a different logo. Something the whole, from, yeah, yeah, different, different name, palette. Different logo, different yeah. palette. Yeah, Hillary mm. probably, she's uh, au fait with fashion. I don't know if the pastel's back this year. What but, do you think um, about red? Because red is a very old-fashioned colour for socialists, isn't it? I, I, you know. You're okay with that? I'm all right with red. Yeah, yeah. You'd prefer the pastels, you think? Uh, yeah, that's that's the way I'd go. What do you think mm-hmm. about teal? Teal. Well, that's sort of a light blue, which is where you really want to go, that's isn't it? That's where you want to be, That's where you, you want to be. That's where you want to be. You want to mm. say, we are not right wing. That's Nothing's right. changed, but we are in that yeah. middle, middle bluey ground. Everyone who likes national, we're national light. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't want to go for the rainbow palette because they're already quite far into that. Mm. Um, okay, let's talk... This is uh, getting weird. Call centres. You, you identified that. <laughs> that's quite... It must have been getting really weird. Um, okay, call centres. We were talking to someone, a company uh, who've, who've brought up this, they hope, is going to be the answer to people getting frustrated and annoyed and angry and potentially violent when they deal with call centres. Um, you seem to be reasonably stable, Martin. Uh, are you, have you ever <laughs> sort of facade. almost gone ape at a call centre? Um, I just lose patience. I have not got the patience to sit and wait. And um, where are they putting these robots? Are they going to put them in Mumbai or they'll the be, Philippines? In the, well, or, they'll be putting them where the call centres are so they'll all be in Kazakhstan. Yeah. I know what's going to happen. This robot's going to spend time analysing all the calls and it's going to spit out the answer saying, the problem is me. <laughs> Robots. They want to talk to a human that works in the actual building of the company, the business that you're trying well, to get it's in already, touch with. It's already holding people up because the worst thing in the world is when they tell you, before you can get through to anyone, that your call may well be recorded for training purposes. I don't want to talk to someone that's being trained. I want to talk to <laughs> someone who's someone already learnt how to handle my query. It is quite interesting now, though. I sort of get a little bit of a kick out of timing it. You know, on your phone, you time how long you wait and yeah. that sort of... As, am I going to break the record? Yeah. You know, 28 minutes is a little bit exciting. But then do you know what happens then? So you've been waiting for 28 minutes yeah. and then you waste three minutes explaining that you've been waiting for 28 minutes. The worst is when they can't solve the problem. They say, look, um, if it doesn't work out, give us a call back. You say, is there a secret number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spend another 28 minutes just to get back and go, yeah, things That's are all good. do that either. No. Um, all right, Martin Sned and Jeremy Corbett, thank you both very much thank for you. joining us. Um, seven days is on again tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, right.